Hi, and welcome to Bending Emacs episode seven. Today, we'll take a look at eShell built-in commands. Before we do that, a quick chat about the channel. Now, the channel's goal is to showcase short and focused Emacs videos. I am hoping that uh, perhaps we can give Emacs a bit of uh, visibility, uh, maybe grow the community a tiny bit. Uh, either way, I'm glad that you're enjoying the series. Um, I'm very thankful for all of those subscriptions and helping me grow the channel. Please keep it going. Uh, and of course, tell your friends. Now, you may have noticed that my last video was only a few days ago, so you can consider today's um, early video a, a little thank you um, for all of those subscriptions and comments coming in. So what are we doing today? We're going to be taking a look at um, eShell built-in commands. Now, eShell itself is a really broad topic. Uh, if you're new to eShell, uh, eShell is the, um, it's Emacs' uh, um, uh, built-in shell and is fully implemented in eLisp. Today, we're going to be talking about eShell commands, in particular, uh, built-in commands. Now, these commands are alternatives to external commands, um, the likes of uh, cat, ls, copy, and so on. Um, the main difference is that these commands are implemented as ELIS functions, and as ELIS functions are not that different from any other ELIS function that you typically write in Emacs. Main difference is that you prefix the names uh, of these functions with uh, eshell slash. So for a command like cat, you would name it eshell slash cat, and then eshell will recognize it as one of those built-in commands. Now, when I first started uh, using eShell, um, I was a little bit uh, surprised by um, the, these uh, internal versus or, or built-in versus external commands. Um, sometimes I didn't quite know if I was using an internal versus an external one, uh, but it actually turned out to be fairly straightforward if you want to know which one you are using. So um, you just use the which command. So for something like which uh, CP or copy command, you can see that um, it's using the uh, built-in uh, ELISP uh, function here for copying files. Now, uh, also, if you want to perhaps um, tell eShell that you want to use the external uh, copy command, then you can just prefix it, prefix it with a star, and you can just type CP. So if I were just to uh, invoke this without any parameters, you can see that we are now getting the um, external uh, help message or usage message uh, for CP. If I do the same thing without uh, any parameters and no uh, prefix here, then you get the internal or the built-in uh, ELIS function um, help string. So uh, with that in mind, oh, actually, before I move uh, any further, if you're kind of curious to see which other commands are available, uh, you could use something like um, control HF to describe a function. And if you do something like um, e shell, oops, e shell slash, then you get to see a list of um, kind of commands that um, are available as a built-in. Um, in any case, for today's goal, uh, we're basically going to be creating our own built-in eShell commands. How are we going to do that? Um, we are just going to write some ELIS functions. Um, they're not that different from any other. Uh, as a first uh, command, we'll just write a greet command. Um, so as I mentioned, they're not that different from any other function. The main difference is just the uh, name of the function that has to be prefixed with eshell slash. Um, so uh, for this particular uh, greeting function, we're going to be taking the arguments um, and then we'll consider them uh, as people. We'll join them, join them into a string um, and uh, we'll just greet them with hello to um, all of those uh, people passed in as arguments. So I'll go ahead and evaluate that. And if we pull our uh, eshell again, and we just say something like uh, greet, um, so Sophia, you get uh, the greeting for Sophia. Uh, similarly, if we just uh, add a few um, or uh, another um, uh, few parameters here, we can say something like uh, Sophia and Mateo and you get a greeting for these two. Um, so uh, having uh, built our own greeting command, uh, we can see that it's fairly straightforward. Uh, now, in my previous video, um, I displayed um, some images in, um, in buffers using um, 
using uh, um, overlays. Uh, now, for quite some time, I've been thinking about um, improving or kind of enhancing the uh, eShell cat command. So if I were to pass it an image rather than a text file, then it, it displays or outputs the image for me. Um, so to do that, um, I went and um, started looking at it and it turned out to be fairly straightforward. Um, since the eShell slash cat command already exists and because it's an ELISP, I can always go and kind of hack it a little. Um, we can use an advice uh, for it. So to do that, we'll just create our advice function here. Um, the main kind of um, difference um, or the main kind of um, thing that I do in this uh, in this advice function is I check to see if the incoming um, uh, arguments into this function are actually um, um, images. If they are, then um, I go ahead and and generate a, a string that actually has those images um, uh, uh, inserted, so eShell itself knows uh, to display them. If the arguments are not a um, if the arguments are not uh, images, then you just proceed as usual and invoke the original eShell um, cat command. Um, so having um, Yeah, so having um, defined our advice function, all we have to do is um, go ahead and advice uh, add this function. Um, so it kind of wraps around the existing uh, eShell cat function. And with that, we can go ahead and take it for a spin. Uh, now we have here a couple of, um, of files or image files in a directory. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up um, the, um, eShell um, uh, buffer again. And so now we can just say something like cat um, who.png. And you see that uh, it's not just trying to output this as a, as a text. In fact, it's doing the right thing and displaying it for us. Now, if we wanted to do maybe um, multiple files, we can just do something like um, uh, cat bending.ping uh, or who.ping or PNG. And you see that both images were outputted to our eShell buffer. Um, so uh, with that in mind, also from the previous episode, um, you may have seen me um, displaying uh, link um, previews as uh, overlays. Um, and the heavy lifting was uh, effectively um, carried by um, this external command line utility called Rinku. Now, um, Rinku uh, by default effectively uh, outputs JSON. So if I were to go and uh, invoke Rinku here uh, with a URL or a Google Maps um, URL or link, uh, you get some JSON um, information or metadata back uh, in the shell. Now I wanted Rinku to behave now like my um, newly enhanced cat command. So I went into seeing how I could go about that. So to do that, uh, it's not too different from the other things that we've done so far. Um, we are no, we're no longer um, advising a function. We're actually just creating a, a new internal uh, built-in um, uh, eShell command, uh, so we call it eShell slash, and we're just gonna call it Rinku uh, like the external uh, counterpart. We'll take those arguments and we will um, pass them straight over to uh, the Rinku external command, um, and we'll just capture the output. With that output, we basically know that it's JSON, so we'll just parse it, um, put it into a met metadata, um, um, uh, local variable here and uh, with that in mind we can check hey is there an image uh, path uh, in the metadata if so we are going to use our new uh, enhance um, eshell cat command uh, to display the image um, optionally if there is a title in that metadata we're just going to go ahead and output that title as well if the metadata was, if we were unable to um, um, parse that metadata, we're just going to output um, whatever came out of Rinku. 
uh, in case it was maybe uh, an error. So I'll go ahead and evaluate this. Uh, and if we are lucky and we run this again, you get to see that Rinku um, is no longer um, uh, outputting JSON, but instead is rendering the um, the image um, that was um, uh, the image path uh, or the image that was downloaded, uh, as well as some text that came out in the um, title metadata. Now, um, for Rinku itself, if we uh, add another um, uh, flag here and just uh, invoke um, a preview, then the output is a little bit different. It actually generates a thumbnail or rather a preview like you would typically see in a macOS or iOS app. So that's it for today. Um, as I mentioned, eShell is a really broad topic. Uh, we merely just uh, touched on uh, built-in uh, commands, uh, which are effectively uh, functions. They are super versatile because they are ELISP. And as ELISP, uh, as I like to say, uh, anything in ELISP is pretty much up for grabs. So you can kind of go and hack it and do things like adding advices to it if you'd like to change or enhance the, uh, their, their behavior. Now I'm wondering what you would do uh, with uh, with the, your your newly acquired um, knowledge of ELISP um, of um, e shell commands or built-in commands. Uh, is there any particular command that you would enhance? Uh, please leave me a comment uh, and let me know. So again, this is it uh, for today. Uh, thank you. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and of course, leave me some comments. Thank you.